ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਬ੍ਰੇਕਫਾਸਟ ਬਸ ਚ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਫਿਰ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਹਰ ਹਫਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਨਵੇਂ ਕੈਨੇਡੀਅਨ ਇਸ਼ੂਜ਼ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀਆਂ ਸਮੱਸਿਆਵਾਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਈਏ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਰੱਖੀਏ ਸਿਰਫ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਲਿਆਣ ਦਾ ਹੀ ਮਤਲਬ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਤੱਕ ਉਹ ਪਹੁੰਚਣ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਹੱਲ ਲੱਭਣ ਦੀ ਕੋਈ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਫੀਡਬੈਕ ਦੇ ਰਾਹੋਂ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਅੱਗੇ ਤੱਕ ਪਹੁੰਚਾਣ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਜਾਰੀ ਰੱਖਨੇ ਆ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ 'ਚ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਤਿੰਨ ਸੈਗਮੈਂਟ ਦੇਖੋਗੇ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਸੈਗਮੈਂਟ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ ਕਲੱਬ ਆਫ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੀ ਇੱਕ ਪੱਤਰਕਾਰਾਂ ਦੀ ਸੰਸਥਾ ਹੈ ਬ੍ਰੈਂਪਟਨ ਬੇਸਡ ਉਹਦੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਮੀਟ ਐਂਡ ਗ੍ਰੀਟ ਰਾਊਂਡ ਟੇਬਲ ਪੀਸੀ ਇੰਟੀਰੀਅਰ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਦੇ ਲੀਡਰ ਟਿਮ ਹੋਡਕਨਾ ਦੇਖੋਗੇ ਜਿੱਦੇ ਚ ਪੈਮ ਹੁੰਡਲ ਵੀ ਆਏ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਅੱਗੇ ਜੋ ਸਮੱਸਿਆ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਬਜਟ ਦੀ ਉਹ ਰੱਖੀ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਬਿੱਲ 13 ਦਾ ਵਿਰੋਧ ਕਿਉਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਐਨਡੀਪੀ ਦੇ ਐਮਪੀਪੀ ਜਗਮੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਇੰਸ਼ੋਰੈਂਸ ਦਾ ਬਿੱਲ ਰੱਖਿਆ ਗਿਆ ਸੀ ਉਹਦਾ ਵੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਪੂਰੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸਾਥ ਕਿਉਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਆਈ ਹੋਪ ਯੂ ਇੰਜੋਏ ਦਿਸ ਸੈਗਮੈਂਟ at one point i think rendra takar said that you opposed it a month and a half before even the budget was was <coughs> in the house uh, so that means you were in opposition anyway it doesn't matter what was in the budget well it's silly right i mean what mr takar said is not accurate uh it's not true and that's the kind of games that they're playing um i said very clearly directly to the premier when we had a meeting back in november i thought uh our plan was a good one to turn our economy around create jobs and balance the books he rejected it on the spot i think that was unfortunate and i said you know what okay maybe i don't have all the ideas in the world i think we got the right path on the pcs but listen premier if you come up with a plan that's going to create good jobs in the private sector good jobs that you can actually raise a family with good middle class jobs and you come up with a plan to reduce spending and balance the budget i'll support that even if i don't agree with all the ideas you do those two things i'll support it but when i open up the pages of the budget no neither of those things is in there there's no jobs plan and actually spending goes up and the deficit is increased it's bigger than last year so i read every one of the 309 pages or whatever it was no jobs plan no plan to control spending it was an easy call we said no pretty black and white i just think that There's a lot at risk here. In Ontario, which has been the leader in Canada, the best place to get a job, to start a business, to see it grow. If your kids are graduating from college or university, it should be the best place for them to move then and get a good job in their chosen field, their profession. But I'm worried we're falling behind. We've lost 300,000 good manufacturing jobs. We heard about that today. More and more red tape, bigger and bigger deficits. We've got to make a dramatic change in our policy. That's what I fought for. uh some said all oh, your risk in election but i was sent here to stand on principle fight for jobs get the spending under control and balance the books and i don't apologize for it well, you're being quoted by uh, uh andrea holvas this morning which was tweeted by global mail reporter that apparently you've said that you have no interest of making this minority government work well i think people should actually hear what i say <laughs> rather than believing what twitter you know will make up um my view i'm going to vote based on what's in front of us and every single vote will have a very simple test one does it help help us create good jobs again in our province to make ontario a leader number 2 will it reduce the size and cost of government or three will it give us greater transparency more respect for taxpayer dollars so i'm not interested in supporting dalton mcginty because i'm afraid of an election I'm not interested in supporting Andrew Horvath because I'm afraid of an election. I was sent there to stand up on good principles. I'll apply those three tests each and every time. And sadly, this budget it didn't pass those tests. I'm not going to stand there and allow us to build a deeper hole to chase more opportunity away from our young people. And I'm tired of seeing a lot of talented people that have had to go out to BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, to the states to find a good job. We need a dramatic change in path. We're putting good ideas on the table. We'll keep doing that. But I can't support um bills or budgets that are going to make Ontario's decline even worse. Jay, 
taking away from the budget, uh, automobile insurance, which has been a hot topic all along, and an MPP, NDP MPP has brought a bill out in the House as well. It never succeeded. Your take always has been that theft, fraud, automobile insurance fraud. If three or four person people are involved in the fraud that you have been claiming all along, why is everybody being penalized? What is your take on that and what is the remedy on that particular issue? I'll, I'll say a few words about this. So I'm going to have Pam Hundle um, talk about what she's doing here in, in Brampton. Let me say two off the top, I'm thrilled to have Pam as our candidate for Brampton Springdale. This is a, a talented lawyer, somebody who's very active in the community, a, a young mom, so understands the challenges a lot of families are going through. Um, got close last time, and we give her a better central campaign, we're going to get her as an MPP. And I'm glad Pam has joined with me here today. Um, with respect to auto insurance, yeah, you look at the, um, when you talk to folks in the industry, they say that uh, the primary driver of higher auto insurance is fraud. And they say it's, I think, close to, is it $2 billion yeah. a year or so yeah. that comes out of fraud? Um, I, well, they say, it's, they say it's the largest share, largest increase uh, comes actually from fraud in the system. A lot of the times it's phony accidents where they stage vehicles crashing into each other with multiple people in the vehicles. Then they all march to some shady clinic where they charge back to the auto insurance companies for therapy that never happens. You've got um, uh, shady tow truck drivers who take them to that clinic in the first place. So the whole chain is based on, oh, sorry, the whole chain is based on uh, fraud in the system. And it means that honest drivers end up paying higher auto insurance rates at the end of the day. And it's time the government stopped turning a blind eye towards a major driver in the system. We had good ideas to fight this uh, as part of our campaign. We continue to fight for those ideas. The bottom line is start locking people up. These shady operators that are ripping off the system, ripping off honest drivers, put them behind bars. Put them in jail. Stop this stuff out. Get the police involved and put pressure on the auto insurance companies to start cracking down as well. If we truly want to do anything but auto insurance rates, you've got to take this fraud out of the system because it's getting worse each and every year. And Pam's doing some things locally, and I'm going to say a few words. If I may, um, I just want to point out that in 2007, when I was a first a candidate for the PC party, and I was door knocking, and I went door to door, I heard about auto insurance, and, and, and voters were telling me about these concerns, and it, it was there, and they were saying, we're very concerned about auto insurance rates. We move down to 2011. I'm door knocking, door to door, and people are so angry with auto insurance rates in Brampton. Like, when I'm talking about Brampton, we know that Brampton has the highest rates, one of the highest rates in the province. And when we brought this up, when we were talking about policies, and we were talking about grassroots issues, this was an issue that was brought up to our party, and they took a keen note on this issue. And I, and I do want to point out that we were the only party that talked about auto insurance rates in our platform in 2011. And I understand that there was frustration by voters because there's been so many years that nothing's been done. I mean, we're going back to 2007. They felt that nothing's been done about auto insurance. So by 2011, they were very frustrated when I went to the door to say, well, what else can you do? And I had the, I can say confidently, I had the support of the party. I was in every hope that I was going to win. And had I won, this was an area that I wanted to get on and start tackling right away and had the full support of the leader in the party to get on this. And we have to start somewhere. So when, with anything, when you have to work on something that's been like this for so many years, such high rates and they're only increasing, we have to start somewhere and that somewhere is fraud. That's one of the areas that we have to start on because we have to be able to show the auto insurance companies that we're, we're giving this area attention now, we're putting pressure on you, we're cracking down, and therefore the cooperation has to be there. And there's many other aspects. And I'd like to say that next month, um, I have a, an MPP, Jeff Urich, joining me in Brampton to do an auto insurance town hall. So we haven't forgotten about it. A, a lot of people say election's over, we've forgotten about the issues. They feel politicians often do that. We haven't forgotten about the issues. 
We'll be doing an auto insurance town hall next month. We'll be letting you all know about it. We're going to ask the community to come out and talk about it so that we can, moving forward, keep this issue above, uh, you know, as a number one issue for residents. I know from, for Brampton and across Ontario, but specifically Brampton, Springdale, where I'm standing and across Brampton, they're saying, Pam, you, you can't forget this issue. This issue is important. It affects us every single day. I have people that live unfortunately in Brampton but their driver's license shows Hamilton or a different city and why is that mm. because they're saying if, if I show a Brampton address my auto insurance is going to be higher yeah. so these are there's many issues and I want to hear from voters I want I'm hoping to get a good turnout at that town hall so that we can continue to work on this on this issue you guys hear us okay at the end yeah. okay. okay and to just um, uh, Pam had mentioned uh, Jeff Urich, so for, for print it's Y-U-R-E-K. He's the MPP for um, Lambton, no sorry, that's Monty, for Middlesex, Elgin, Middlesex, London. So he lives in St. Thomas, he's a businessman, he's a pharmacist, uh, and somebody that I know is going to get to the bottom of these issues. So I've appointed a special critic within our caucus, one of our new members, who's very keen, hardworking, smart. And uh, Pam saw fit, which is a great idea to invite him here to Brampton to actually do a town hall, listen to what people have to say, to hear their answers, and to make sure that if we have the honor of serving as the next government, to actually get in there and do something about it, not just talk about it. We, we are glad to hear that you are paying some attention. But when I see you thinking with way it's going, that you are uh, blaming it all on fraud, when we see it, the rates in the Brampton are too high as compared to the other areas. That means the fraud happens here more and the honest driver, all the fraud is being dumped on the honest drivers here. But that's wrong. It should be taken by everybody else. Yes. It should be spread around so that the rates in Brampton should not be higher than the people around. Like Garden is, we cross Mayfield, the rates are so low. Absolutely. There's no reason when I see your thinking that fraud, uh, fraud happens south of Mayfield and that's why in south of Mayfield rates are high. I, if I can clarify. So, um, so, you see, you can clarify, but I, I see the way your thinking is going because of the fraud rates are high. Not only in this area, they should be high generally all around all over the country. And cracking down on the fraudulent people that's the other aspect of it. It should have nothing to do with penalizing the honest drivers here living in Brampton. You're a hundred percent right. And if I may clarify that fraud is one factor that we have to look at. Like I said, we need to start somewhere. But when you're in Brampton, we also have to look at why over the last several years has it continuously gone up in Brampton? Why hasn't the current gov government taken proactive approach to finding out how these rates are they arbitrarily set how are these rates set how come they've gone up a huge amounts in these areas I mean these are all areas that we have to look at and and honest innocent drivers are being penalized my father's in his 70s he has a clean driving record he can't afford his insurance we all know that it affects ourselves and our family members and why is that? So we have to, what I just want to clarify is fraud is one aspect that we do need okay, to, to, to start with because the auto insurance companies are bringing that up. When we're talking, when we're trying to have honest conversations about bringing rates down, that's what they're bringing up with us. It's not that I want to get into a debate, but I have interviewed you and we have interacted before and your take all along has been fraud. Fraud is, is the factor for the automobile insurance rates. Fraud, fraud, fraud. Christine Elliott, the other day, the deputy leader, we were with her in Queen's Park, and she had the same mm -hmm. thing. Now you are saying that we are looking into other aspects also. So before, you never studied other aspects? Of course we did. Listen, because I mean, we never heard, at least, sure we I did. am not Oh, no. Well, then, I uh, apologize that you didn't read through the platform, but fraud is a leading driver. We also have the highest benefits of any province for accident costs. So we end up with a Cadillac suite of benefits in compared to other provinces, which is something that people have pointed out. We have a regulator in Fisco that is lethargic, doesn't respond, doesn't seem to be pushing the companies at all. So as a result, we have the highest auto insurance rates in Canada. 
right? So there's many drivers like that. We've got a comprehensive approach. But listen, I mean, if you think the Liberals got a better idea, then why are auto insurance rates going through the roof? What have they done actually for the last nine years? Talked a good game, but done nothing about it. And I've actually appointed a guy in Jeff Urich who's going to get to the bottom of these things, bring home, bring forward a comprehensive plan to give honest drivers and families a break. And Pam's actually bringing them right here to Brampton, an open town hall to hear from people, talk about our ideas. And listen, I recognize that in opposition, you don't have all the research capacity. you got to get out there and listen to people, get their suggestions, put together that plan. We're actually doing that compared to the current government that's just looked the other way. Talked a good game, but you look at your auto insurance bill compared to a year or two ago, ask yourself if they actually done anything. That right now we have a minority government, as we all know, and every party has its own policy on whatever the issues are. So liberals have their policy on it, NDP has their own, of course, PC has their own. But the, if, if everybody is interested to address the same issue, and when it comes to the region of P.E. and Brampton and Mississauga, people here mostly South Asian, and mostly many of them new immigrants. They do feel that there is an element of racism into having the higher rates only for this community and not for other community. But leaving that aside, the second issue, uh, if all the parties are interested, and I will say leave the Liberals out of it, I don't know in detail what the NDB has proposed in that, that bill which just got defeated. But if, if the PCs are interested into addressing some of these issues, NDB is interested into dealing in some of the issues, I am sure that if both sit down on a table and work out some compromises, okay, this is the minimum one, two, or three things we can work together and get it done within a six months. This can happen. But if, if each party is going to stick to their own policy, whatever that is, it's not going to cut anywhere and more discussion papers, mm -hmm. more open uh, like uh, community hall meeting. I mean, NDP has done it, I'm sure Liberals have done it before, now the PC will do it, but the thing is, if there is no light at the end of the tunnel, this is all exercise for the heck of it. So I, I don't know what, what Pam you're looking for into it, but if, if somebody is going to look deeply into these issues, okay, these are 10 issues, we can't solve all of them. Let's focus on two issues and have them done within six months. You know? And one thing I've, I've, I was looking into how to be an activist, and there are certain things in there, and one thing they said at the bottom was that, if you don't worry who's going to get the credit, things will be done. So I don't know who wants to get the credit by the NDP or the BC or the Liberals, but if they somehow put their mind into it, and I would say leave the Liberals out of it, put the NDP and the BCs together on one or two issues related to the uh, insurance which is happening right now in Brampton and Mississauga, doesn't matter who gets the credit, it will, be, it will get done. Agreed. So I, I will say do something like that rather than just a, another policy discussion paper. Yeah. Happy to do it. And I know Jeff will too, right? He's getting to the bottom of the issues. He's got his ideas. Do you think we've got a monopoly on all the ideas? Of course not. That's why we actually go out and talk to people who are experiencing yeah. this or in the field. I mean, yeah, I'd be happy if... if it, yeah, and know? in fact, didn't we have some committee work that was being done on this? There was a gridlock, a gridlock committee uh, and yeah. insurance reform. So anyway, the answer... Yeah, absolutely. There's an old expression, right? <laughs> Victory has a thousand fathers and failure is an orphan, yeah. right? Now, if the other parties want to get together with us to look yeah. into this, absolutely happy to participate in that. I, 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 I don't think you'll be able to agree on all the issues, but yeah. even one or two or three issues are addressed, people will say something is working, you know? Happy to do it, yeah. for sure. Good suggestion. Mr. Tim, my question is a little bit different. Insurance companies are saying that they are increasing the rates because there are a lot of frauds. Actually, they are uh, distracting and derailing the issue to maximize their profits. Actually, the situation is not like that. Uh, fraud constitutes a uh, little bit, but the problem is their working style. They want to uh, exploit the poor people, I would say. They are decreasing the benefits on the other side. On one million coverage, there is only 1% of the people who, who are injured, like brain injury or spinal cord injury. And now they will get only 50,000 instead of 1 million. Suppose he is permanently disabled, person involved in the accident. Right. And if they have serious injuries, but not on brain or spinal cord, 
they will be getting fifty thousand dollars instead of one thousand, uh, one hundred thousand crores. And the other persons who have whiplash or tendon injuries, they will be getting very less money. Initially, they were getting uh, one hundred thousand. So what these companies are doing, they are extracting their profits and they are befooling the people just by saying that uh, frauds have increased. If we accept that frauds have increased on the on the other side, then then there is no need to penalize the people. If if I am doing fraud to him, why he is being punished for that? That's our question. And no party, even liberals, your party or NDP, was serious about that. Uh, my uh, opinion is that MPPs. Short, short, please. My, my question is that in the in these six, seven years, why your company, uh, why, why your sorry party was not aware of these issues? These issues came only when people raised these issues. These issues came into light when people raised uh, these. Yeah. So these were not uh, these were not picked up by your party. Well, I, I'll disagree with that. Uh, we've been talking about this for some time. Has it become worse? Yeah, it's become worse, but it was bubbling up, right, like a boiling pot uh, for some years now. We actually did have committee hearings on this. Uh, some advice was brought forward. Um, I participated in some of those committees myself before I was leader, so it was at least before 2009. Uh, we suggested uh, a number of changes. Yeah, you're right. The, the bill that, that the Liberals passed a couple of years ago did lower... Uh, benefit packages in some ways, although they're still higher than the average in the rest of Canada. But clearly you need a system that if you mentioned a brain injury, serious injury, if somebody has that kind of serious injury, it should be there for them at that time. The more minor things, you've got to get people back to work, and I can understand you want to make sure it's more of a um, efficient system to give you the proper return to work or your lifestyle, but at a lowest cost possible. Um, so there's no doubt it's a complex system. There are some major drivers, whether it's fraud, whether it's the accident benefits across the board. And if the regulator, Fisco, is not doing a good enough job holding companies to account, then obviously you need to make some changes there. What I will say is we've actually look, we're looking at this in a comprehensive fashion uh, to make sure we actually hear the best advice out there from consumers, from experts in the field. You'll have some people on one side and others on the other, and probably the truth is somewhere in between. I just have a lot of confidence in the person I put in charge and people like Pam here to make sure that we get the right input into the system. And I don't care if it's an NDP idea, a liberal idea, a PC idea, an idea I heard from the Punjabi Press Club, right, a broker somewhere in Brampton or in Niagara or whatever. We've got to address this issue. And we just keep kicking the can down the road, making minor changes here and there. It's not working for Ontario families. And as you said, average folks are paying the price of higher and higher premiums and getting less coverage if they're injured in return. Why did you vote against the Bill 45 if you were so concerned? I mean, that actually dealt with some portion of this problem, maybe not everything. Bill 45 was, yeah, there was like, there were about three or four insurance bills uh, that were out there. I think, well, I mean, uh, Jeff probably could speak to that in detail. I think the understanding on, on that bill was it wasn't attacking the problem in a comprehensive fashion. It was treating the symptoms as opposed to the cause of the problem. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 I have raised this question with the, Mr. McGarity when we were going back. The same question to you. Countries, third world countries, which are very poor. I'm not especially because I'm an example of India. People who have no claim, their insurance is decreased every year. That is called no claim bonus. But here, people like me and so many from us have never claimed in life. We have never issued it infringement ticket. Perhaps for some. But our insurance is also being increased. And something is wrong basically in the policy. The government can control. If you say that insurance policy or insurance companies will do something, why should they do it? Then they are making profit from the innocent people. So if you have any chance to make the government next time, all these things should be made in mind, make in mind that the people should get some benefit who are innocent. Yep. Let me, um, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about um, uh, the auto side 
sort of big picture perspective too. You know, I, I was first elected in 1995, and uh, that was uh, just after the Bob Ray government under Premier Harris I was elected. And one of the big issues in 1995 uh, was that auto insurance premiums were too high. They were going through the roof. Same thing you just described. If you had a full no claims uh, record, you still got a big increase in your auto insurance. You had a son or a daughter uh, who was uh, in their 20s or late teens, boy, you really got hit hard with big increases. And what happened too was that meant more and more people were driving without insurance. They were trying to skirt around the system. And then it's even worse if you get hit by somebody who has no insurance, right? Situation. So we actually brought in uh, auto insurance reforms that, that knocked down the, the rate significantly. It actually went down, not up smaller. It actually went down significantly. And at the end of the day, what turns what the tides go up and down. So we brought it down. The new pressures came up, and fraudsters found ways of getting around the new rules. And then the end of our government, about 2002, 2003, auto insurance rates worked against us. We were too slow to react, and the Liberals had their own plan to bring in auto insurance changes, and then they won government, and they brought them in. Rates were plateaued, but now we're going back up again. There's always this cycle. And the challenge is to make sure you anticipate that and make the changes before it gets out of hand. I'll argue that we missed that point a couple of years ago when it started to bubble up. Now it's, it's boiled over. Some people suggest that the government should run auto insurance. That's been a position that the NDP has taken over the years. Let me tell you why I don't like that option. Um, I, I think competition, healthy competition, always makes the world go round. As much as folks around this table um, may, would, may like it if they were the monopoly on news and got all the advertisements, it actually forces you to work harder, to be closer to your customers, to put out good news because there's a bit of competition. Tim Hortons is one of the most successful businesses uh, here in Ontario and in Canada. Tim Hortons tends to make money because people like it. They go in there, they serve their customers well, they give them a good cup of hot coffee and some food. There's one Tim Hortons you might have heard about that's actually losing money. $250,000 a quarter, million dollars a year. It was run by the government. It's in a hospital in Windsor, right? And because the government took over to more, it's actually losing money. And money that should have gone to health care is now going to subsidize coffee and stuff like that. So I'm not trying to be facetious here. I just think that if government runs things, it tends to be inefficient, it tends to be unresponsive. They have a very important role to regulate. And when things start going wrong, to act. To do your research, to think about it, because it's a complicated area, but then to act before things get out of control. But respectfully, I think that if government ran auto insurance, you would have to make sure you had any kind of calls between 9 and 5 and not the hour at lunchtime, nothing on weekends. Your rates would go through the roof. You'd have only one choice in the system. That's not healthy. That's why we don't support government-run auto insurance. The, the second question is... Can we move on to some other issues now? Why didn't you support Bill 13 to begin with? Let's talk about another issue. Sure, you, the bullying issue? Yep. Yes. Yeah, happy to. And again, Michael and, and Pam want to uh, give their thoughts. This is my perspective. You know, when I was, when I was growing up, there was always bullying. Uh, it's always been around. That's the human nature. Kids can be cruel. But if kids were bullied, they at least had the chance when they left school and got home, there was a bit of safety, right? A, a bit of um, peace from the bullies at school. Today in 2012, it follows these kids everywhere. With social media, the internet, cyberbullying, it's a whole different world that we didn't have to go through when we were growing up. And can you imagine being tortured at school and then you don't even get peace and quiet on the weekends or where you're home? And it's just tragic to think of kids who are afraid to go to school every day because they're going to get picked on for what they look like, who they are, where they come from. And I've had some really sad stories. I was in London a little while ago talking to a mom whose uh, uh, daughter had a learning disability. She had trouble learning or reading and speaking. And she got picked on as a result of that. And the girl tried to commit suicide when she was 14 years old. Right? That's absolutely tragic. 